five characters. I'm going to get them dressed up so that we can get started. The first person that we meet in the story is the master here. And the master is a rich man. That's what they say. So I've got this. This is quite an expensive, lovely coat. So I'm going to give it to you. Can I give it to you? Because you're the tallest person here. And it's quite a long coat. This actually, you know whose coat this used to be? This used to be Father Bam's cloak. And then he gave it to me as a present. Wasn't it nice? It's a really nice coat. So you are the master, the rich man. Okay, person with lots of money. Who is the second person that we meet? That's the manager. Hey. Who would like to be a manager? You'll be the manager. Good. This is actually my one. It's actually my wife's dressing room. <laughs> Don't tell her because I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> you took your wife's dressing gown. I took my wife's dressing gown. I took it. Can't tell her that. All right, then we have who's the next people we have in the story? We have the two debtors, right? The two people who owe money. So who are the two debtors? Are you a debtor? Can we give you a black cap? Pretty sharp, huh? Yeah? <laughs> and who else wants to be a debtor? That's oh, nice. Very nice. And then who's the last person in the story? Yes, what? And then who is she? She's my friend. She's, she's <laughs> But in the story, who's the one last person in the story who talks to us? The rabbi. The rabbi, Jesus. Oh. So Peggy, Peggy gets to be Jesus. Isn't that cool, Peggy? And you're going to wear a yamaka. There we go. And then to show that she's a rabbi. You see? Very good. Okay, so now we've got all the characters that we need, and I'm just going to try and think about how we should do it. I think maybe we should ask you to come stand here next to the lectern, and I think we should ask the debtors if you could go stand a little bit closer to my lectern. Mm -hmm. the, the So here we have the story. The manager discovers, no, the owner, the rich person, right, discovers that the manager has been mismanaging his money. So you're not very happy. You need to look across. There we go. And this is the dishonest manager who we think has been maybe spending the manager's money without telling him. So you need to look naughty. <laughs> there we go. Very good. Now, in all of Luke's stories, whenever Luke talks about a rich man, like this one over here, he means that not a good person. That's how Luke thinks of rich people. He thinks of rich people as generally not good people. They steal, they take advantage of other people, they always want stuff for themselves. That's why he's wearing this beautiful cloak. It's a bit hot, hey? <laughs> but it's a beautiful cloak, very expensive. It's made from the fanciest wool that you can get, like cashmere or something like that. And the manager is the person who's responsible for money. And in Luke's story, he's described as dishonest. That's how Jesus speaks about him. He says he's the dishonest manager. And he's the one who mismanages the master's money. So these are both not very nice people. Can you hear that? This is a story about two people that Jesus wants us to know are not nice people. 
The rich person is the person who hoards money for himself and takes advantage of poor people. And the manager is the one who's stealing and mismanaging and taking advantage of the whole situation to also make some money for himself. So one day, the owner realizes, the rich man, that this person has been dishonest. And so he comes and confronts him and tells him he's being naughty. Can you confront him for us? I need to do that. There you go. Sure. <laughs> I'd be a bit scared, wouldn't you? Yeah. So you need to look a bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> and the manager's scared because the manager realizes that if, if she gets fired from this job, she can't do anything else. Does she look like somebody who could dig big holes in the ground and plant olive trees? No. Not really. <laughs> Not really. That's, that's just like too much hard work. Does she look like the kind of person who'd like to just sit at home and eat salty cracks all the time because that's all she can afford? No. She doesn't. She looks like she likes the good life. Hey, she likes chocolate. She wants to eat nice <laughs> steak and ice cream and things like that. So she's very worried. So Jesus says to us that this is what she says. He says, uh, where am I now? She says, oh, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig. And I'm ashamed to beg. So he's quite, she's quite proud as well. She doesn't want to have to be humble. And then she comes up with a great idea. Can you see the light bulb? over her head, it just switched on. She suddenly has this great idea. She says, I know what I will do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. People will welcome me into their houses. So she's quite clever, isn't she? Yes. She might be a bit lazy. She might not be very strong. She might be a bit proud, but she's also very clever. And actually, Jesus says that she's shrewd. Do you know that word shrewd? It kind of means that you have some sort of wisdom, that you can figure things out for yourself. You can understand what's happening, and then you can make a plan. That's what a shrewd person can do. So the manager, the, the owner goes away. Maybe you want to go stand up here just over there next to that chair over here, and the, if you can come stand center stage, because now that move, this movie's now all about her. Okay. So you start to call all of the debtors, the people who owe the master money. Let's just get them one by one, just one. So you come to the first one, and you ask her, how much do you owe my master? And you say, 10,000 liters of olive oil, he replied. 3,000 liters of olive oil. Do you know how much that is? That's a lot of olive oil. If you think like of a bottle of olive oil or oil, yeah. it's like that. Yeah. It's 3,000 of those. That's quite a lot of olive oil. So the manager then says to her, just quickly change how much you owe. Instead of 3,000, make it just half that. One and a half thousand. <laughs> How do you think the data feels now? Not good. Not good? Happy. He lost his his money. No, he's still got all of his olive oil. Yeah. Right? Yes. And how much do you have to pay for it now? Uh, half. 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 Half of that. You only have to pay half. So she's got 3,000 liters of olive oil. But she's only going to have to pay for half of them now. So how do you think she'll feel? Uh, Happy. Happy. Yeah. Happy, wouldn't you? Yes. Can you imagine instead of having to pay 3,000 Rand for all the oil, now she only has to pay 1,500 Rand for all that oil. So she's very, very happy. You need to look very happy. <laughs> she's so happy because all of a sudden her debt has gone from here to here. It's half what it used to be. She's very happy. And if you were very happy about something, how would you feel about this person who gave you that discount? Uh, I like him. You'd like him, hey? 
you'd like him because he's really helped you out, saved you a lot of money. Be generous. Be generous. So, in fact, if he needed a bit of help, you'd probably help him out, wouldn't you? Yes. Isn't that clever? <laughs> so, by cancelling your debt, making it smaller, the clever manager, who's very clever, right? Lots of brains. <laughs> She's figured out a way to make this debtor in her debt. Somebody will want to help her out. So you're very happy and you go back home. And then you call the other debtor. This debtor owes you some wheat, okay, some flour. And how much wheat is it? It's um, 50. Lost my place. It's quite a bit of wheat. 30,000 tons. 30,000 tons? That's a, that's a lot of wheat. That's like a whole big tower of wheat. And she says, cancel it and make it just 20,000. Cancel and make it 20,000. So, so you fill in the slip and you give it back to her and all of a sudden, you don't owe so much money anymore. So how would you be feeling? Happy. <laughs> and, and, if, and if she needed some help, would you help her? You would help her, why? Because you were so grateful, wouldn't you? So you also go back home, happy. Yeah. Come back home again. Now here's the funny thing. The manager has managed to organize herself quite nicely, hasn't she? She's managed to get friends on her side who are going to help her when she loses her job because they're so grateful because they've got a discount. What do you think the master thinks about all of this? Not very happy. Because it's his money, right? Not actually, she's just the manager. She doesn't own the olive oil and she doesn't own the wheat. So the master has just lost a whole lot of money. You'd think he would be really angry wouldn't you? Because he's lost money. But here's the funny thing. When the manager comes back and speaks to the manager, so when the master comes back and speaks to the manager, this is what she says. She says, I commend you because you acted shrewdly. I commend you, in other words, I reward you because you were clever. So you must look like you're very proud of her. Well done. Well done. You managed to get rid of some of my money. Why would the manager do that? This is why I find the story very strange. If I was if I was the owner, I'd be really upset. Because I would have just lost thousands and thousands of rands. But instead he comes back and he commends the manager for being shrewd. The master commended the dishonest, he even calls him dishonest, the dishonest manager for acting shrewdly. Where's Jesus? Jesus, it's time for you to come on, because you've just been sort of standing on the side telling us the story, but now you need to come and explain it to us. Because this is Jesus' story, right? If we were telling the story as like a very rich businessman, we would say this was not good business. But Jesus wants us to understand that this is actually quite a clever story. And this is what Jesus explains to us. Two things. The first is that by the manager doing what she did, these debtors now are not only happy with the manager, but also with the owner. Does that make sense? Because the manager works for the owner. The manager works for the rich man. So from their perspective, they will think that it was the manager, the owner, sorry, who actually gave them the big discount. And so they would be happy with the manager. So can you just thank the manager, the, man, the owner? Keep getting muddled. And when the owner has built up these nice relationships where these debtors are happy with them, there'll be good business afterwards, won't there? They'll come back and they'll do more business with the owner. 
So actually, even though he's lost a bit of money now, he'll probably make some more money in future. So it's shrewd. It's clever. You've lost a little bit of money right now, but you're going to make some more money in the future. And so the manager, even the owner, even though he's lost some money now, he lost a thousand liters of olive oil and 10,000 tons of wheat. But he'll make all of that money back plus more because people will want to work with him. What happens to the manager? <coughs> probably loses his job. Yeah, he's probably going to get fired. You can say you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> very sad that the manager's fired but then Jesus gives us a second lesson which is not about making money not about business he gives us a lesson about spiritual life and he does, does it for us right on the very last line he says the people of this world meaning people who are not Christians just ordinary business people like these people those four <coughs> They are more shrewd, they're cleverer in dealing with their own kind, in other words, business people dealing with other business people, than are the people of light. And who are the people of light? All of us. All of us who think of ourselves as Christians, as children of God. So people who are in business, he says, are smarter and cleverer and more shrewd than people who follow Christ. So he says, this is his message in verse 9, I tell you, use your worldly wealth, the money and the things that you have in the world, use those things to gain friends for yourselves, so that when your wealth is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. And where are the eternal dwellings? Heaven. With Jesus in heaven. So we have, you and me, we all have some worldly wealth. We might not have millions and millions of rands. I don't have millions and millions of rands. I've got a few hundreds and hundreds of rands. But we all have got something, right? We all have a bit of money. We might have a little bit more toothpaste than we need. We might have an extra couple of sweets in our drawer that we're hiding away from tomorrow night. We've all got little bits and pieces of things that we have. Jesus says, when we share the things that we have, those material things that are not spiritual things, they're just things that we have, money and stuff. When we share them with other people, like this manager did with those two debtors over there, they might not welcome us into their home, but God will welcome us into his home. And that's the best home we could ever have. Because when we're in God's home, there's more money than we could need. There's more food that we can need. There's more people who love us than we could even imagine. There's more happiness. There's less pain. We feel more able. We can run more easily. We can jump and dance more easily. All the things that we might long to do, we can do in that eternal dwelling. And he encourages us, Jesus now does, <clears throat> to take the things that we have and to share them with other people so that we are welcomed into the kingdom of God. And that's what it means to be a shrewd, clever Christian. <laughs> it's been a long movie, and now we say the end. The end. <laughs>